What's up guys, this is Hardy from Digital Painting Studio. And today I have a technique and a mindset that I want to share with you guys. I think a lot of artists will find this genuinely transformative. This was one of those just game changers in my whole approach to art that I think can really help a lot of artists. Also, hang with me until the end of this one because I'm going to close with an announcement of something we're doing in the weeks ahead that I am extremely excited about. Let's kick things off with a giveaway. I get asked about my brushes pretty regularly, so I wanted to make those freely available to, to anybody. Uh, we've got a freebies channel that we just started in the DPS Discord server, which you can join with the link invitation in the description. Totally free, and the ABR file for the DPS brush pack is available there to download. It's, it's kind of pinned to that channel. I hope you enjoy them. Okay, so I made a very bold statement with the title of this video. Let's see if I can deliver on that. And I'm going to come at this with two main ideas. One is more of a philosophy and a mindset, and the other will be a concrete technique, like a, a tutorial. It's this cool little layer trick that I suddenly use on like every painting, and it has me seeing value in an entirely new way. I think you'll find both incredibly useful and eye-opening, so let's jump in. Item number one is changing how you paint by knowing who you are painting for. It's kind of a weird question to ask yourself, right? Like, who are you painting that for right now? And for much of my life as an artist, I don't think I really had an answer for that most of the time. If somebody asked me that, who are you painting that for? The honest answer would have been, I don't know, you know, I guess whoever ends up seeing it. I'm, I'm always just trying to make it cool and hope that somebody out there likes it, maybe. Right? Seems, seems reasonable. And it wasn't until years later that I started really thinking about this critically, thinking about my viewer when I started to paint something. It was actually in medical illustration school. Every project we were assigned would have target audience in the specifications. And for a medical illustration project, it was usually something like, is this for a doctor? Is it for a medical student or a patient? or a medical journal cover. And each target audience would have different special considerations. You would need to tailor your approach to a project in order to make it effective on the intended viewer. And we always got drilled on this. It kind of really planted that question in my mind. It's something I try to ask myself every time I start a project. Who am I painting this for? So that's the question I want to leave with you guys today. Now, medical illustration is kind of a weird example because it's this small, hyper-focused corner of art, but this idea is still hugely useful for all artists, concept artists, illustrators, fine artists, everyone really, and it can help you make really good decisions early in your project. So. I've thought of a few of the main audiences who I think we all usually paint for, whether we're really conscious of it or not, and I'm hoping that shining a light on this will help you see it and give you more control over what you choose to emphasize in your artwork and be more conscious of why you are doing that. So know who you are painting for every time. The first one is simply yourself. You are painting for you, either just to express yourself or for practice so that you can improve or just because you, you feel like making something cool today. And that's awesome. Art is such a personal, individual thing that we all need to just 
kind of make that time to paint for ourselves. You need those long stretches of solo introspection to really build that visual library, that inner world that we all rely on as creative professionals. So when you're painting for yourself, when you know that you and you alone are the target audience, you get some special privileges that you should try to really be aware of. First of all, paint any damn thing that you want. If you think it is cool, don't worry about what anyone else in the world might think. If it's too weird or too dark or too cute to anything, don't worry about it. It's just for you. you know, go nuts. Express yourself. You're not doing this to please anyone else. There's no invisible viewer over your shoulder approving or disapproving. You are the boss. The other thing about art that is just for you is that it can be ugly. A lot of time when we're practicing art, we end up wasting so much time trying to make our throwaway practice work into something polished and beautiful. Why do we do that? Like, who is that for? Practice work can be ugly. The only goal with practice is for you to have learned something, to have gained some new skill. And that should really be your only concern. If you fill up canvases with embarrassingly messy gesture sketches or something that just look like scribbled crap, but it made your line work a little stronger, it helped you understand human anatomy or balance, weight distribution, movement, you know, whatever, then that canvas full of scribbles was incredibly valuable, incredibly successful. So, paint for you sometimes. Use that freedom like a gift. And remember that no one else in the world has to see this. It's just for you. You have permission to be weird and to make some ugly art. It's how we grow. For our next audience, let's put on our professional face. Let's talk about painting for the client. Now, in a lot of ways, this one is sort of the opposite of painting for yourself. You have to put a lot of your preferences to the side and focus entirely on what your client really wants, what their project needs. And this is tough, right? I think that sentence might really be the definition of that elusive artistic professionalism that we all aspire to, putting the client's needs ahead of your own artistic wants. It takes some effort. It takes some maturity for sure. And it's not like you have to totally obliterate your creative identity every time someone hires you. And remember, they hired you for your work, your style, your creativity, your unique skills. But when you're painting for a client, always try to see the project through their eyes. Think of how they are going to be using your artwork. Who is their audience? Do we want this artwork to get people excited, to attract investors or customers, to tell a story? Really try to know that. Really try to tailor your approach to suit the purpose that you're being hired for. We can't just paint what we feel like painting any given day. We have to really target it to hit that project's goal. And if you can do that, if you can kind of switch gears in that way, your clients will love you. And look, even if you are not yet working as an artist, this is still hugely relevant for aspiring professionals because the portfolio that you build needs to look like client work in this way. And I think that's one of the main factors that leads to one skilled artist getting hired and another skilled artist to be passed over. It's exactly this. Does your portfolio look like it's full of work created for clients or work created for yourself? Even if that portfolio is full of gorgeous work that the artist created for themselves, it ends up leaving that prospective employer wondering whether the artist can really solve those professional problems, can advance a project. 
So when building a professional portfolio, definitely think like a client. Put yourself in that mindset and don't just include everything that you find cool and beautiful. With client work, the best way you can understand your client's needs is just communicating exhaustively. Really read those project briefs. Get invested in them. Try to get fired up. Really see what your client sees in this. Tap into that spark that got them excited about the project. And ask questions. In my experience, most art directors are incredibly cool and are really excited to talk about their project and their vision, especially if it's an indie company. That project is often their baby. It's something they really love and they'll, they'll answer questions all day. So when you're painting for the client, try to be professional. Be your creative, awesome artist self, but put their needs first and really focus your artistic choices on what will best serve their project. The last audience we'll discuss is probably the biggest minefield, and that is social media. Sometimes we are all just painting for likes. And look, it is easy and fashionable to tear that down as something shallow. But look, everyone needs validation. I think artists may need it more than most right? That's that drug that artists are chasing. Ever since we first got praised by a parent or a kindergarten teacher for painting a pretty picture, we have all been hooked on that validation, and social media can provide that. Also, art is such a subjective thing that we need that external confirmation to know if we're doing good work or not sometimes. Every artist who has ever arted his head days where they're just like, do I just suck? Is this any good at all? Or am I just completely wasting my time? And a post that gets slightly above average likes can make those doubts just evaporate. And that's a nice feeling, right? I mean, undeniably. But, and you just knew there was going to be a downside. Painting for social media, for likes, for an algorithm, can be dangerous for an artist. Sometimes a truly excellent piece of art will just tank on social media. And who knows why? Maybe just the algorithm hates me today. Maybe most of my usual viewers were asleep when I posted it. You know, when those likes just don't come, Even if that piece of art is awesome, it can magnify those artistic self-doubts hugely, and it can really destroy an artist's confidence. That's why I want to caution you to kind of be really aware of that, especially if you are creating specifically to try and build that social media following. So know that sometimes even great work just won't get any traction out there. That's just part of it. We're all trying to paint that painting that will just break the internet. But if that doesn't happen, it's okay. You still made something of lasting beauty. Hopefully you learned something new and your mom probably still loves your art like she did when you were in kindergarten. The other danger here is that when you aren't painting for yourself or for a client, but just to sort of offer something up shiny to the masses, you kind of start to lose yourself. That very question, who am I painting this for? It starts to just lose all meaning when the answer becomes everyone. So this one is definitely tricky. And again, I'm not at all tearing down art made specifically for social media. In fact, I would say that this very image that you are watching me paint is in this category. Building a following is definitely part of an artist's business strategy in many cases, but it's important to stay anchored to their own artistic identity. Not to be an imitation of some other artist or some mix of everything at once on the internet, 
Just try to be your genuine, awesome artist self. Hope you find these eye-opening, guys. The next time you pick up that stylus, just remember, know who you are painting for and make those choices to suit the purpose you intended. Okay, that is enough philosophy. Let's switch gears to the other side of this. I promised you guys a painting technique, and I have a really cool one to share. And it all has to do with value. Now, I'm betting that you all have a pretty firm grasp on the basics of value, how light and dark help us describe forms and create the illusion of three dimensions. It's how I'm making this dragon seem round and three-dimensional. It's how I'm implying all of these cool muscles and tendons and overlapping scales. Value is awesome for describing forms, but, and this is the thing, it can do so much more than that. And here's where the technique comes in. Make a new layer. Select your main figure's silhouette and just fill a new layer in with a solid color. And I usually use a cool gray, but Really, this works with practically any color. Set that new layer to multiply. Now it's like it instantly puts the entire dragon into shadow. It's like we've turned the lights out. But now, we add a layer mask, and I start to slowly hide the shadow layer. And check out the instant drama that this starts to create. It's like he's emerging from the shadows. And with a layer mask, you have total control over this. You can make cast shadows. You can make really soft gradients from light to dark. But here's the main point. Use light as if you were shining a spotlight on a stage. Create drama. You know, lead your viewer's eye. Show us where to pay attention. And it always leads to work that ends up feeling more moody and nuanced, just a little more finished. And once you discover this, it's like no painting really feels complete without it. I hope it works for you. And definitely let me know in the comments if you have tried this or some variation of this before. But I just can't get enough of it. It always makes these dramatic paintings seem a little more dramatic. It's like we're we're capturing this moment when this dragon kind of leans out of the shadows like he's about to leap off of this pillar to take flight all because of a little trick of the light that we played here imagining yourself as the director the the one who's deciding where we should look instead of just using light and dark to make things look round let's also tell a story with it let's be dramatic let's give it as much cool factor as we possibly can try this out you'll love it Okay, let's finish this one with an announcement. And this is something I am really excited about. Next month on the evening of August 8th, mark your calendars, we're going to do a YouTube live event with a truly awesome guest. I talk a lot about what art directors want to see in portfolios. Well, let's see if I'm right. Let's ask a real art director about portfolios which artists get picked, what do art directors look for in those portfolios, and why. Our guest will be Mike Valancourt. He is the art director at Magic the Gathering in charge of their packaging and product department. And he's a really great guy. I've worked with him a few times in the past. Um, He is an incredibly accomplished artist himself, and obviously an art director of a very iconic brand now. So, For any aspiring professionals who are in the process of building a portfolio, Mike's opinions and advice will be gold. So mark your calendars, set a reminder, you know, subscribe again just to be safe. And I'll see you here on August 8th, 6 p.m. Pacific. Awesome. That's it for now, guys. In the meantime, good luck with your artwork. Paint something cool today.